ceremony, if, if you look to my left here, we've got the rose set up, the white candle, I've got the plate with salt on it, a lemon, and a sword. This table is going to be unmanned, alright? It's in honor of the 12 individuals, the 12 Marines, and one Navy that we lost in the end of August in Afghanistan. If you allow me. This table is a way of symbolizing the fact that members of the United States Marine Corps and Navy are missing from our midst. They are commonly called POWs or MIAs. <clears throat> we call them brothers that are unable to be with us this afternoon, and so we remember them. The table set for one symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against the oppressor. Remember, the tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. Remember, the single red rose displayed in the vase reminds us of the families and the loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep the faith awaiting their return. Remember, the red ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is reminiscent of the red ribbon worn upon the lapel and breast of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing. Remember, the candle symbolizing the upward reach of their unconquerable spirit. Remember, the slice of lemon. The slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter faith. Remember, the glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us today. Remember, the chair is empty. They are not here. Remember, there is salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Remember, all of you who served with them and called them comrades, who depended upon them might need and relied upon them, for surely they have not forsaken you. Remember. Remember until the day they come home. Remember.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we're honored to have this morning's blessing done by the Reverend Trevor Nichol. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, we thank you for bringing us together this morning, united in our love for Ireland, for our nation here. We thank you for our time together in fellowship around your altar. And we thank you now as we gather to share our meal. We ask that you will bless us all, and you will bless these thy gifts which you are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend. Uh, just one quick announcement. If there are any past grand marshals in attendance here that have not signed in, Just to like to introduce at this time the dais, and I ask the dais when I introduce you to just remain standing until I want to introduce, okay? And I hope you're applause until we get to the culminating factor, which is the guy right in the middle who just sat down, right? Um, first of all, Reverend Trevor Nickler. Grand Marshals 
or in attendance to please sign in at the registration table so that we may recognize you from the podium this morning. In addition, if you, if you plan to make a, a presentation, I've spoken to several individuals already this morning who plan to do that. Uh, please sign in and speak directly to Matt Buckley, who is the breakfast chairperson, and he should be out at the registration table also. 50-50 uh, tickets will be available all, all morning. The rear of the hall, Tom McCarthy, is sitting at the, the booth at the table back there. There, let's see Tom. Dollar piece, six for five, 12 for 10, and progressions thereon, right? That's what you're talking about? <laughs> okay. Thank you for your support. Okay. I, I used to, last time we had our breakfast, uh, this is really great by the way, Kevin, having a breakfast uh, this time of year. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah? Uh, but it's been a while, and I've used some of the people that probably heard me speak before um, forgot it, so I can say it again, all right? Laughter is brightest where food is best. That, that's an Irish saying. That being said, we're ready to begin serving the breakfast. So, the breakfast will be served beginning with the Grand Marshal table and the dais. Cools will be assisting us in, the, in directing the individuals to the tables. You go in through that, you go in through here. All right. All right. You go in through this door and then come out the other door and there should be two serving lines at the back. So, bon appetit, have a great, uh, great breakfast. I might say now uh, also, while we're doing that, music during your breakfast is going to be performed by Fiddle Frenzy as a special edition this year arranged by our breakfast chairman, Matt Buckley. Bob Donnelly, who is uh, with Fiddle Frenzy this morning, shared with me some of their background. The arranging age, the entire group, is only a portion of the group here, from six to 17 years of age, they're from the entire Big Hudson area, and most of them learn by ear, which is incredible. They performed at the uh, Irish Night in Great Lake several weeks ago. They were phenomenal. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the group. Thank you for coming, and your parents for bringing you, and let's have a breakfast at home. And Rodney from Generation Video is here, recording everything. Um, and within a short period of time, you'll be able to see the video on YouTube, correct? On YouTube, so thank you very much. Have a good breakfast, right? Once again, thank you, little friends. It's so we'll have you guys.
uh, parade board members, starting with President Kevin Stromer, Vice President William Coffey, Secretary Will Bill Kiernan, who's down at the line of march, I believe. Yes. Um, the Treasurer, Mrs. Marianne Garay. Marianne? Right. Okay. Hold on. And the Financial Secretary, Mrs. Una Teresa Gormley. I'd also like to recognize um, the parade chairpersons. We'll do one round of applause for everybody when I'm finished. Right? The Mass in honor of St. Patrick and Michelle, the Grand Marshal's breakfast, uh, Matt Buckley, who had to leave to go down to assist in Greenwood Lake at the line of march. The parade line of march, again, Bill Kiernan. These are the chairpersons of the committees. The 50-50 and raffle is Tom McCarthy in the back of the um, uh, back of the venue here today. The Parade Journal and Breakfast brochure, Kevin Stroma and, 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 and Maureen Morse. The Grand Marshal's installation dinner, December of 2019. Uh, ladies AOH, Division 5 and Juniors Breach the Bowl and Group. Irish Day on October of 2019. Ladies AOH Division 5 and Juniors, Bridge the Bold again in your committee. And the kickoff event at the Tequila Grill this past August 22nd, which is memorable because that's when my basement flooded uh, due to Ida. Right? Um, Ladies AOH Division 5 and Juniors, and Liz Lynch was in charge of that committee. Let's give a big round of applause for all those people. And, and thank you so much. We uh, also would like to recognize the uh, past Grand Marshals who are here today in attendance, and we have a number of them. Uh, we'll start off with Dennis Mulcahy, 1981. Dennis, over here, Chairman of Project Children. Jackie Graham, Jackie Graham, 1998. Jackie's over here. Dennis Brown, 2006. Dennis Ryan. How you doing, Dennis? Uh, the uh, Tommy Flynn, 2008. Good friend, Tommy. Marianne Gray, 2009. Who's Marianne again? 2011. Joseph Ron Happis. And I, I was fortunate to follow him the next year. Bill Boys, 2012. Thank you. 2015, Ann Slatter and Michelle. Ann is back here. 2017, George Anderson. Where's George? 2018, Maureen Morse. Maureen's in the back. Thank you, Maureen. And our last parade, it seemed so long ago, but it was just not that long ago. The Honorable James O'Donnell. Jim O'Donnell. Now, as, as tradition here in the, for the parade committee and in, at the breakfast, we also like to recognize the following past Grand Marshals who are no longer with us, who are never, nevertheless have joined with us today in a bond which has been forged with common experiences and celebrations over the years. Pa deceased past Grand Marshals who are always with us, Jack McCarthy, Paul O'Dwyer, Leo O'Grady, most Reverend Bishop Austin Vaughan, Dick Wells, Dorothy Hayden Cudahy, Mary Holt Moore, Doug Garnham, Jim Kelly, Mary Ann Moore Wild, the Honorable William J. Larkin Jr., John Grehe, Mona Kehoe, Seamus Comiskey, the Honorable John K. McGurk, Jeremiah Jerry Quill, James Graham, Reverend John Logan, and Stephen O'Shea. The parade committee wishes to extend to their families and colleagues recognition that the accomplishments and support of our past Grand Marshals are not forgotten. To that end, an ad has again been placed in this year's journal and will continue to be a permanent part of the journal for years to come. Thank you.
All right, we have several individuals we'd like to, um, I'm going to read the individuals who are here and not making presentations. And at this time, I'd like to invite Kevin Cummings to join me at the podium. Ke Kevin's going to stand here, and if I miss somebody, he's going to tap me on the shoulder. All right? All right, first of all, these are some individuals, Kevin, that are here. Um, we're not making a presentation, but we just want to recognize them. First of all, uh, Warwick Town Justice Nancy Brennan D'Angelo is over here. Nancy, thanks for coming. We have the chairman of Project Children, and I mentioned before as a past Grand Marshal, Dennis Mulcahy from the Greenwood Lake Gala Culture Society. We also have representatives from the Gaelic Culture Society, Kathy Holder is the president, and our Celts of the Year for this year is Aaron and Frank Latito. Aaron, raise your hand in the back there. As mentioned before, we also have our Orange County Legislator and past Grand Marshal, the Honorable James O'Donnell. We have Jim. Uh, we have AOH dignitaries with us that I will mention now the Terry Meyer, who is the New York State Ladies AOH representative. Ms. Terry? Thank you, Terry. We have the past president of the Ladies AOH in Orange County, Mary Wintgertner. Mary? And we have the current President of the Ladies AOH in Orange County, Anne Marie Mulholland. Okay, at this time, we have some individuals that have expressed an interest in, in greeting Kevin personally. Um, and they're, they're terrific people, tremendous supporters of the parade and in the past and the present. And we'll start off as tradition. The host uh, official who's hosting the parade today, the mayor of Greenwood Lake, the Honorable Jesse Dwyer. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. Bill, I'm going to adjust this. Uh, thank you so much, Bill, for having me here today uh, and having the Village of Greenwood Lake, a part of your very special day. Um, you know, there's so many people that are involved in this entire process, from this parade committee breakfast to the actual parade itself, from volunteer staff and volunteer uh, organizations, our Greenwood Lake Gala Cultural Society, our Village Police Department. And I have to say, though, as mayor, I don't do very much for this parade. My job was to say yes or no. Now, we are having a parade for St. Patrick's Day in September, so it's obvious I have a problem saying no. <laughs> now, we are very excited to have this parade committee and, and the parade in Greenwood Lake. We have uh, been working with an excellent parade committee, Kevin, Bill Kernan, uh, outstanding people, and we have a great relationship. We're looking forward to having this parade in Greenwood Lake for the next three years at least, supporting our community, supporting our, our, our economy, and showing you that we are very much a great little Irish community. Uh, I hope to see you, everybody, on this beautiful day in Greenwood Lake, where we'll be joining, hopefully, Aaron Fry at a restaurant, which is one of the sponsors for this event, Emerald Point, Irish Whisper. And I hope everybody drives safely to Greenwood Lake, and more importantly, drives safely from Greenwood Lake. God bless and slaunch it. Slaunch <laughs> the operative word. Guru Mil Mahagush. That's good. All right. We have our next pres presenter would be, and there'll be two individuals, um, both of our state senators from the 39th uh, dis senatorial district and the 42nd uh, senatorial district, the Honorable James Scoofus and the Honorable Mike Martucci will be coming up and joining us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really delighted to, to join all of you, as well as my colleague and friend, Senator Mike Martucci. 
I have a friend who, whenever something fortuitous happens, uh, and it's outside the winter months, he says it's like Christmas in July. Uh, now we can all in this room, whenever something lucky and happy happens in our lives, like St. Patrick's Day in September. Um, happy to be here, uh, always happy to support the parade and the good work of the committee. And, uh, and as far as the Grand Marshal, Kevin, goes, uh, it appears as though you have given so much of your life to promoting and supporting Ireland and Irish culture. You bleed green, and it appears as though you are the perfect fit uh, for this role as Grand Marshal this year. Congratulations, Kevin. And so in conjunction with my colleague, Senator Martucci, I, it's my honor on behalf of the 300,000 people approximately I represent, as well as my extended McEntee family that hails from County Meath, in Ireland, I, I want to present this New York State Center proclamation to you, uh, Kevin Cummings. Congratulations. All the best on a great parade today. Thank you very much. It's always so difficult following uh, my, my friend and colleague, Senator Skoufis, but uh, I'm just so lucky to be able to represent the western part of Orange County, the host to your parade this year. So I look forward to seeing you all in Greenwood Lake later, and uh, maybe we can grab a drink after the parade. <laughs> so congratulations to our Grand Marshal. Congratulations to you all. It's my pleasure and honor to be here. Thanks so much. Okay, next, next presenter will be uh, Assemblyman Carl Brabinick. Will be coming up. Carl? Let's I'm sorry, representing the 98th Assembly District. I know, this is great. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's always an honor to be here at this breakfast. And uh, what a great breakfast it is. Congratulations to our newest Grand Marshal, Kevin. And on behalf of the 130, and now it's actually 150,000 residents of the 98th Assembly District, I present you with this Assembly Citation, and also on behalf of my colleagues in the Hudson Valley as well. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Assemblyman um, Colin Schmidt had to leave, but he's going to have a, a presenter, uh, Kelly Askew, who's the Deputy County Clerk. At the same time, we're going to have uh, her joined by our Orange County District Attorney, Dave Hoovler, who's going to be making a presentation on behalf of, on behalf of Steve Newhouse. Schmidt, and he wants to give you the certificate and congratulate you on being Grand Marshal. Um, sorry to say that I haven't had the pleasure to meet you personally, but I want to extend an invitation to you to come to the clerk's office on behalf of Annie Rabbit, a former Grand Marshal, to give you a certificate. So thank you. This room is filled with admiration and respect for you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> first of all, Congratulations on, on, the, on the great honor. I'm so happy you finally get to celebrate it now in front of all these people. Uh, Steve Newhouse, the county executive, asked me this morning uh, to give a presentation to you on his behalf. However, he was a little late getting the presentation to me, so I'm going to get it to you this afternoon. But on, on behalf of everyone at the district attorney's office and everyone in county government, um, we appreciate uh, what you do. We appreciate the Irish tradition. And I certainly appreciate the support that we get from this community and law enforcement. Um, it, it, it's second to none. So congratulations. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, on behalf of the uh, sheriff called the voice, we have a presentation going to be given by Ken Jones, the Undersheriff of the Sheriff's Department. Ken? I know what you're thinking, what's an Undersheriff? 
The only uh, similar title is organized crime, where you have a boss and an underboss. People ask me, why, why don't they call it the vice sheriff? But that word has a very special meaning in law enforcement that we don't usually associate with personnel. <laughs> I'm very happy to be uh, here representing the sheriff. And since everybody's counting numbers, representing more than 300,000 people that live in Orange County, uh, we're proud to give this certificate and the exclusive sheriff and undersheriff coin collection to Kevin Cunning, uh, Cummings, who is, uh, as I understand it, the longest serving Grand Marshal in the history of this parade. <laughs> I learned that little fact, uh, driving rainstorm in the tequila grill, talking to Kevin. So congratulations, Kevin. I know you're going to have a great parade here today. The weather is perfect. God is shining on you today. Let's all go out and have a great parade. I think you took part of Kevin's speech. He was going to say he's uh, one of the longest serving active Grand Marshals uh, in the parade history, which is absolutely true. Um, now, on behalf of the town of Warwick, we have Town Councilman Floyd D'Angelo, who's going to be making a presentation. On behalf of Mike Sweeten, who couldn't attend today, unfortunately, but whose the town of Warwick is the, is the host also of the parade uh, within the town of Warwick. Floyd? Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of the citizens of the town of Warwick and Supervisor Sweeten, who unfortunately couldn't be here, we'd like to present you with this proclamation and congratulate you on the Grand Marshal. Thank you very much. I'd point out that Floyd and Nancy D'Angelo are both members of the Gaelic Culture Society and our past Celts of the Year also themselves in their own right. So thanks again, Floyd. have um, from the New Windsor, the town of New Windsor, the town council person, Sylvia Santiago. Sylvia, you can make a presentation. Thank you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a real honor uh, to be able to recognize Kevin and his aides um, and to wish everyone a wonderful parade today. Uh, but more so, it's a real honor to be able to recognize such an extraordinary man. Um, not only does he bleed green, he is such a humble, kind, and selfless person, a loving man, a family man, a loving husband, a loving father, and a loving grandfather. Um, I've known Kevin for a few years, and um, I, I, I truly have such honor to be able to uh, congratulate him today on such a special day. On behalf of uh, New Windsor Town Supervisor George Myers, the town board, and all the residents, congratulations. Okay, we have, we have two distinguished representatives from the uh, AOH, from the National and from the New York State AOH. And I'd like to invite up the AOH State President, John Manning, and the National AOH Director, Tim McSweeney, to make a presentation to Kevin on behalf of the organization. Kevin John just told me he's going to build a new room in your house for all your plaques. <laughs> Kevin's contribution to the Irish community extends far beyond Orange County. As a representative of the National Board, I'm here to present Kevin with a certificate, but I also have to say, outside of Orange County, Kevin and I spend many a nights solving the world's problems up in East Dorham at his camp. 
We haven't signed them all yet, but we're getting there. But Kevin, on behalf of the National Board of the AOH and past president James McKay and current president Daniel O'Connell, I present you this certificate of merit. My brother Kevin Cummings. Everyone, please don't go to the New York State AOH website today. Our webmaster's here. We gave him a day off. So please, no complaints that nothing's getting posted or on our Facebook page. Kevin, as you know, on behalf of New York State and on behalf of all your brothers throughout the state, from Buffalo all the way out to uh, the Hamptons, well deserved, well honored. We're the, you're the only one we know that's been a Grand Marshal for 18 months and you've been very patient and waited, and all the aides. And we just want to say, Kevin, congratulations. Enjoy your day. you got a beautiful day. And I, I have to say, everybody in Orange County, I am very thankful I didn't see snow this one parade <laughs> and the cold. I didn't have to bring my winter coat. Kevin, congratulations, brother. Okay, the uh, final presentation um, this morning, unless I left someone out, but I think I got everybody, um, will be made by the Mid Hudson St. Patrick's Parade Committee, and presenting that will be the president of the committee, Kevin Strope. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, it's been truly an honor to have you representing us. We couldn't have asked for a better man. Uh, the day that they canceled the parade was a, a Tuesday afternoon. We had our meeting the, that evening for the final preparation for the, the planning of the parade. And everyone looked to Kevin and said, what do you want to do? Do we, do we, do we move forward? Do we, how, how would you like? And he just was a gentleman. He was the one person who, he just offered everyone a little bit of comfort. I personally didn't want, want to stop. I wanted to move forward, but he said, you know, in the sake of safety, let's just step back and relax. And, uh, we couldn't ask for a better man. Kevin, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. That, that is extraordinary. And I have one other additional supplement to that presentation, and that would be made by Marianne Garay to Kevin and his lovely wife. That's too hard. Can you hear me? Uh, I, I wouldn't even need a microphone with my voice. There you go. Okay, thank you. Um, this is presented to Kevin, our longest serving Grand Marshal from me and from the Irish Heritage Festival. And they're pictures of, to the son of Donny Gall, pictures of Donny Gall. Here's the bag. <laughs> and the other is the village of Kilcaw, where his family is from. Thank you for everything. 
Is my hair okay? Your hair is fine. <laughs> Thanks, Marianne. Um, that's for the whole family. That is, that is a special touch that Marianne and is in her artistic genius. You know, they've done is to represent the hometown of the family and to have a landscape uh, picture. That's very, very nice. It is a cherished memory, and I, I think Kevin appreciates it very much. Thank you again, Marianne. Okay, uh, we're honored today to have a special guest of our Grand Marshal who will be introducing him this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a good friend and past Grand Marshal of the Mid-Hudson Parade, Mr. George Anderson. Good morning, everyone. And it is my honor and privilege to introduce our Grand Marshal this year. Kevin R. Cummings was born and raised on Staten Island, New York, the fourth child to Joseph James and Ruth Elaine Connor Cummings. Kevin proudly traces his Irish roots on his father's side to his great-great-grandfather, Daniel Gillespie, born in 1838 in Cashel, Kilcar, County Donegal, and through his great-grandmother, Mary Gillespie, who was born in 1870 and who emigrated to the U.S. in 1890. On his mother's side, Kevin's great-great-grandfather, James O'Connor, was born in 1820 in Kulikan, County Westmeath, and came to the U.S. in 1848. On the latest of many trips to Ireland, Kevin was able to connect with distant cousins who were happy to show him the homesteads of his great-great-grandparents. Some of his earliest memories of his Irish roots were of his parental grandmother, Mary Gillespie Qualter Cummings, speaking Irish, among her circle of friends during the family's Sunday afternoon visits to her home. As a child, Kevin attended St. Teresa of the Infant Jesus Parish and School and St. Peter's Boy High School. He graduated from the newly opened Susan E. Wagner High School and was a member of its second graduating class. Kevin is a 1978 graduate of Wagner College on Staten Island, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in Bacteriology and Health Sciences. He began his lifelong career in health science and health education at the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center in New York City, where he was a cytogenetic technologist. He went on to be a manager in the Regional Medical Genetics Laboratory in Thiels, New York, an affiliate laboratory of the Department of Pediatrics at Westchester Medical Center. Kevin returned to college and earned his Master of Health Administration degree in 1991 from the New School for Social Research in Manhattan and an additional Master's of Public Health degree in 2000 from the New York Medical College School of Health Sciences and Practice in Valhalla, New York. His 25-year career with the New York Medical College began as Director of Research, Information, and Development. Kevin is currently the Director of Web Communications in the Office of Public Relations at New York Medical College. Kevin is a proud 22-year member of the Ancient Order of Hibernians, Father Donald J. Whalen, Division II in Cornwall, New York, where he has held many offices, including Division President from 2003 to 2006. Kevin has been active on the county and state level AOH, having served as Orange County Board Recording Secretary, Vice President, and finally as President from 2008 to 2010. Kevin was elected to the New York State AOH Board in 2009 and served as District 8 Director, participating in AOH activities and acting as the New York State AOH Board Liaison across eight counties until 2011. In 2015, he was appointed as the New York State Webmaster and was also appointed as New York State Organizer. During his tenure as Organizer, two new divisions were founded and a third is in the formation stage. In 2017, he was recognized at the New York State Convention for his service to the AOH and presented with the Commodore John Barry Medal, which I believe he is proudly wearing today. He presently serves as AOH2 Division Recording Secretary. Kevin's love of Irish tunes led him to become a bagpiper with the Hudson Valley Regional Police Pipes and Drums, marching and playing in more than 350 parades, and he and his wife Rose were dedicated members of the Cornwall Cayley Set Dancers dancing every Tuesday night at Division II Hall for more than eight years. 
Kevin has been an active member of the Irish community in Orange County for more than 20 years. He has been a proud supporter of the Mid-Hudson St. Patrick's Parade Committee and was aide to the Grand Marshal in 2007. Kevin has also had the honor of serving as Orange County aide to the Grand Marshal to the New York City St. Patrick's Parade in 2008. He and his wife Rose have hosted many international students in their home since 1990, including three project children, apprentice interns from County Donegal and County Tyrone, who they continue to keep in touch with and have visited on their many trips to Ireland. From 1998 to 2006, Kevin was an eighth grade religious education teacher in St. Joseph's School in New Windsor and served as an usher in St. Joseph's Church for many years. Kevin has been married to the lovely Rose Marie Cummings for 43 years, and they have called Orange County their home for 40 years. They are the proud parents of three children, Rebecca Ann, a nurse practitioner in New Windsor, and husband Matthew Freed, who have blessed them with their adorable granddaughter, Mia Rose, and newborn grandson, Miles Asher. Sergeant Logan N. Cummings, U.S. Army, and his wife Catherine of Fort Belvoir, Virginia, who will be expecting their first son in October. And their youngest, Sean Patrick Cummings, graduated from SUNY College at Brockport and currently resides in North Carolina. Kevin considers being a father to three wonderful children his best accomplishment. Please join me in welcoming to the podium your 2020 and 2021 Grand Marshal, Mr. Kevin Cummings. It took a long time to get here today, didn't it? <laughs> if you were at the fundraiser, you would have heard me remark, we humans make plans and God laughs. Isn't that right, Father Trevor? Over the past 18 months, we've endured historic pandemics, hurricanes, floods, even the threat of locusts, right? <laughs> it sounds biblical. I fully expected to hear this morning that the Hudson River had turned to blood. <laughs> but here we are, we Irish, we Americans. We are resilient, enduring, and determined people. We are a patient people. You can slow us down, but you're never going to stop us. Reverend Father, parade officers, members of the 10 organizations that comprise the Mid-Hudson St. Patrick's Parade Committee, worthy national, state, county officers of the Ancient Order of Hibernians and the Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians, brothers and sisters all. I know my late parents, James Joseph Cummings, Ruth Connor Cummings, and all my ancestors from Donegal, Galway, Westmeath, the Cummings family, the Connors, the Qualters, the Gillespie families are looking down on us today and they are gushing with pride as I am. Because in bestowing the title of the 44th Grand Marshal on me and celebrating here with me today, you also honor them, their lives, their hard work, their sacrifices, and everything it took to have me stand here before you today. I owe it all to them. Father Trevor, thank you for your wonderful Mass this morning. Thanks to the Parade Committee, Kevin Stroma, Bill Coffey, Bill Kernan, Marianne Garay, and Una Teresa Gormley. You are all saints, and I thank you for your patience over these many months. Event Chair Matt Buckley, who did a great job, right? Everyone agrees? Great breakfast. Liz Lynch, she's the Irish Energizer Bunny. If you haven't seen her, I'm not sure if she's here, but she never slows down. 
She pulled off an incredible fundraiser, kickoff fundraiser, in the middle of a hurricane. Breeze the Bold for Irish Day, which was oh so long ago. Kevin Stromer and Maureen Moss for their hard work with the journal. Anne Michelle, Marianne Garay, and Ron Heppes, and Ray Patterson for their participation in the Mass and making it such a great Mass. Thank you, Bill Boss, for being an incredible MC. You always are. You know, I'm pretty sure he rewrote his comments probably more than I had to rewrite the speech. <laughs> Thank you, George Anderson. I, I am truly honored to have you introduce me. You are probably one of the most worthy Grand Marshals we have ever had and an incredible life story. Pull him aside later and ask him everything he's done. Special thanks to my great friend, Judge Terry Mullen. He was a bandmate with me in the Hudson Valley Regional Police Pipes and Drums. He honored me by playing the bagpipes at the mass today and at the breakfast. You know, the late, great Jimmy Kelly had asked to play the bagpipes for me. Um, and it was not meant to be, unfortunately. But something tells me he would wholeheartedly approve of his old bandmate taking his place. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you to the entire Mid-Hudson St. Patrick's Parade Committee, its 10 organizations. You know, you, the face of the, the committee you see here, but there are so many people out there that do so much and they go unrecognized. Um, I hope I have risen to the task of a worthy Grand Marshal. God knows there were worthier candidates out there, some here in this room today. It's been my singular honor, and you've heard this many times, and yes, uh, it was taken a few times and, and spoken about, but it was my original line that I was or am the longest serving Grand Marshal in the 44 year history of this parade. And over the past 18 months, many people have contacted me to voice their sorrow, their disappointment about the cancellations, the postponements. And my reply to them has always been the same. I see this as an incredible honor and I always will look back on it as an honor extended. I truly mean that. And it's also with a smile on my face that I can look forward to being the answer to that oft-asked question, pub quiz question, who is the longest serving? Grand Marshal on the parade's history. You're looking at him. <laughs> I would like to recognize my aides here today. All too often they are forgotten and they disappear into the background of the day's celebrations. Not here, not today. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Brian Michael Archer. Sean Patrick Cummins. Eugene Heppes. Kathleen Rooney Metcalf. Kira Walsh. Robert Thomas Heppes. Christine Purdy, and Donna Buckley. While patiently waiting those 18 months to stand there with me, some of you have celebrated family births, some have endured family members passing on, some have relocated to different states and started new lives. Some with new careers, while others new schools, like Rachel Mullally, who is away at college, you heard, and was replaced by the wonderful Kira Walsh. Life goes on, but here you all are. Because of your determination, your commitment, you are here today where you belong. And when I look up and down that line of fine American Irish men, women, I see many future Grand Marshals among you Thank you for being here today. I applaud you. Please, everyone, give them another round. Thank you.
This is turning out to be one incredible month for me. Um, I'm here standing in front of you as the 44th Grand Marshal, a great honor. I've worked continuously for 55 straight years, never been unemployed, not even for a day. It's a testament to the great American dream. Life pass passes in a blink of an eye. Some people say you live only once. It's not true, you live every day. The secret is to see each day as a gift. And what a gift today is. By the way, I retire October 1st. So how's that for cop capping off a month? We often take for granted the very things we deserve or that deserve our gratitude the most. My children, Rebecca, her husband, Matthew Freed, their adorable children, my grandchildren, Mia Rose and Miles Asher, my newly promoted son, Staff Sergeant, Logan Cummings, he found out yesterday he was being promoted, U.S. Army, his wife, Catherine, they're both from Fort Belvoir, Virginia, they will be welcoming their first son, you heard, in three short weeks. Katie is such a trooper to come all this way. Katie, wave. I know you're shy. Just wave. <laughs> and last but not least, my youngest son, Sean Patrick Cummings, aide extraordinaire, up here with, with me on the dais. You three are truly my greatest accomplishments. And finally, my wife, Rose, my partner for 43 years. You are the love of my life. The best is yet to be. <laughs> to the rest of my family here today, my sister Christine, Kathleen, their families, my dear old friends here today, thank you. You honor me with your presence. I'm compelled to mention my brother Steve, who lives now in Tampa. He would have been here in the New York Minute. He was a worker that worked down at Ground Zero and was eventually diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. He was treated, and he's a fighter. He made a full recovery. He and his wife, Nellie, planned to live the good life in sunny Florida. Steve's recovery was short-lived as he was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, a few short years after beating cancer. But I can see in his eyes he was so proud to hear that I was named the Grand Marshal. Let's take a moment to remember all of those we lost 20 years ago on that awful day and remember those heroes that still walk among us. Some of them are in this room today. Thank you. If you allow me a moment, I'm just going to depart from the traditional Grand Marshal speech, the ones that you've heard in the past. I want to wax somewhat philosophical because I asked myself, why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep coming back? Why do we keep the old ways alive? With all those we've lost over the past 18 months, our wonderful past Grand Marshals, family, friends, neighbors, all the heartache that we've suffered, why do we come together today to celebrate? Forgive me, but as I said, 44 of my 55-year career has been working in clinical research, public health, medical education, so it's pretty much what I know. I kept coming back to that for an answer, and I thought of a famous experiment. Some may remember if you ever took a psychology class. During what seemed to be a pretty cruel study back in the 1950s in Johns Hopkins, a Harvard-trained scientist by the name of Carl Richter placed rad, uh, lab mice in a pool of water to test how long they could tread water. On average, they'd give up and sink after 15 minutes, but right before they sank, they would pluck them out of the water, and they would dry them off, and they'd let them rest for a minute, and then they put them back into the water for a second round. In that second try, how long do you think they lasted? 
They lasted for 15 minutes the first go around. They were exhausted from swimming. Took them out, put them back in. What do you think? 10 minutes? 15 again? Five minutes? Nope. They actually lasted 60 hours swimming afterwards. It's not an error, it was 60 hours of swimming. It's that right there in that experiment. The conclusion drawn by those researchers was that since the mice believed that they would eventually be rescued, they could push their bodies way past what was previously thought impossible. In the simplest terms, it was hope that helped them endure. Without offending anyone here, politically correct world, I submit the Irish race, we Irish Americans, are much like those lab mice. We endure, sometimes beyond what we believe to be our limits. We often struggle, not unlike our Irish ancestors' 800 years struggle for freedom. Doing it not necessarily for their own good, but for their children or their children's children. Maybe even with the memories of those who went before them in mind. If hope can exhaust, cause exhausted mice to swim for that long, what could a belief in ourselves and our abilities do for us? I remember a saying from my Donegal grandmother. She used to say, the same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's never the process, but it is what we are all made of that counts. I leave you with the words from my favorite poem, which in Latin translates to mean unconquered. It truly is my favorite poem. I'm sure Maureen Ra uh, Moss and maybe Marianne Gray would be horrified to hear I actually have a tattoo. And that tattoo bears the words of this poem. It's entitled Invictus. And it was written by William Ernest Henley, who lived in the late 1800s. As a teenager, he endured terrible things, to which I can relate. He nearly succumbed to tuberculosis in the bones of his legs and had to have one of those legs amputated. It was with the threat of his second leg needing to be removed that he was so determined not to lose it, he sought out medical skills, and he found a Dr. Joseph Lister. He's the inventor of Listerine. Dr. Lister was able to save his leg, and William went on to write this poem. And I'm not reading the full poem to you, just the beginning and the end of it, because it's very meaningful. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods there be for my unconquerable soul. It ends with more memorable lines. Those lines may be recognized by some in this room. And it goes something like this. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The poem is about bearing the unbearable. It's about willpower, strength, and enduring at all costs, all the things we Irish are known for. Indeed, what Americans are known for. It speaks about how life always offers us a second chance, and that second chance is called tomorrow. Remember what we as Irish and Americans are capable of if we are determined to make a difference. Remember why you are here. And in the words of C.S. Lewis, the Belfast-born Christian theologian, but a well-known author in, indeed, there are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. Remember, keep on swimming. Thank you. Well, if there was ever any doubt that the longest serving Grand Marshal would give the most dynamic speech I have heard, there's no doubt anymore. Kevin, congratulations, that was absolutely phenomenal.
And I hope you, I hope you keep writing, because I want to read your first book. It promises to be absolutely outstanding. And to your family, you know, they should be, they're so proud of you, and I think, and, and, and rightfully so, those that have come before us, and we stand on their shoulders, and they're very proud of you today. So congratulations again, Kevin. We have, uh, there's another phrase that, um, if you're lucky enough to be Irish, you're lucky enough, some people say. And that brings us to the raffle, all right? And I'd like to bring up Tom McCarthy now. And we're going to have the, uh, who's our raffle chairperson? No, he's there. See, Tom's here, right? But we'd also like to have, um, I'd like to, I, while he's coming up, I want to mention, he mentioned I would talk about the sponsors, the major sponsors for the parade, um, the cover sponsor, Brian and Sharon Stromer and family, Delancey's of Goshen, the gold, gold sponsors, Rose Cummings and family, AOH Division I, AOH Division II, Ann Stromer, the Stromer family, John F. Carey, MD, Dana Distributors, Selena Rofer, Sereski and Sons, Emerald Point Restaurant and Marina, Greenwood Lake Bagels, The Irish Whisperer in Greenwood Lake, Medical Massage Therapy Greenwood Lake, Minturn Bridge, Food Truck Park Greenwood Lake, and Waterstone Inn in Greenwood Lake. The Silver Sponsors, the Hudson Valley Regional Police Pipes and Drums, AOH in America, Orange County, AOH, DJW Corporation, and the Greenwood Lake Bark Park. Thank you so much for all the sponsors and for the support of the parade. Um, okay, uh, Tom, who's going to, before we do that, like, Kevin wants to say something, go ahead. Just like to acknowledge on the, the dinner table for the military, the U.S. Navy, or U.S. Marine Corps, Hat was provided by Lou uh, Ferrara. Herrera, Lou Ferrara, and uh, the coin Lou's wife and Marlene Ferrara. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Also, Kevin asked me to thank the family of the late Ralph Pakovitz who's provided a convertible for today's parade. Thank you so much to the family and, and on behalf of the parade committee. Uh, okay, Tom. We're gonna have the Grand Marshal pick out the winning ticket. Go ahead. Now we've been mixing these up all along. But, uh, you can dig in. Ah, we have the auditor with him. <laughs> Let her read it. He needs his glasses. Oh, you got yours. You have your grandmother. You got yours. Okay. Oh, oh, she's okay. Uh, on a red ticket. That's a joke. All right. Nine five five seven three one four. Nine five five seven three one four. She has, to, she has to verify it. We need verification over here. <laughs> Just kidding. Good eyes. Of course the winner, right? And the winning ticket goes... Well, of course it is. How much, Tom? A lot of money. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Who is who's helping? What's your name? Mia Rose. Mia Rose. Mia Rose. Mia Rose Cummings. No, Freed. Okay. And I'd like to thank Mia Rose Freed for helping us with the drawing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. Okay, I'd like to have. Uh, I'd like to invite now. Kevin. Forgive me. Kevin Cummings, Grand Marshal, would you please front and center? <laughs> this is also from Lou Ferrara. This is a Marine Corps coin for your, your, uh, thank you, I'm honored. Um, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, I'd like to invite to the podium now uh, past Grand Marshal Jackie Graham for the singing of the national anthems of Ireland and the United States of America. Okay, Jackie? Please stand. Okay. I understand from doing a little research that the Irish national anthem um, is now sung in Gaelic at all football games in, in Ireland, and the English version is no longer s spoken at Gaelic football games. This was known as the Sinn Féin song, the soldier's song, um, revolved before the Republic of Ireland was formed. So, the Irish National Anthem. We'll sing you a song, a soldier's song, with cheering, rousing chorus. As round burning fires we throng, the chilly heavens o'er us, impatient for the coming fight. As we await the morning flight here in the silence of the night, we will chant a soldier's song. Soldiers are we whose lives are pledged to Ireland. Some have come from the land beyond the wave, sworn to be free, no more our ancient sireland shall shelter the despot or the slave. Tonight we man the barnacle in errands cause come woe. Mid cannons roar and rifles peal, we will chant a soldier's song. Now, to honor America, I proudly kneel before the cross and I stand before the flag of our great country. The Francis Scott Key song, written after the during the War of 1812. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright star through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red and glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle Banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. That, thank you, Jack as only you can do, I tell you, give us this history as, as well as this, the song itself. Thank you so much, Jack. Uh, well, last saying before we conclude is, may you have the hindsight to know where you've been, the foresight to know where you're going, Greenwood Lake, and the insight to know when you've gone too far, most likely New Jersey, you gotta turn around and go back. On behalf of the parade committee, In a moment, <laughs> we will pivot, and I'd like to have the closing from Father Trevor Nugget. I'm most grateful to you uh, for the privilege of being here this morning. I had the Irish blessing 
uh, when I came into church, but uh, it, it, it was taken from me inadvertently. But I have got it now, I think, and um, I'd like to send you on your way with that, if I may. Uh, I owe you that much. And uh, I thought I had it, and I do. It'll, it'll appear in mo momentarily. Uh, here we go. The Lord be with you. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And may God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Grand Marshal, and thank you again. Thank you, Father. And on behalf of the parade committee, thank you all for coming. And once again, congratulations to our Grand Marshal, Kevin Cummings. Have a great parade today. Thank you. And thanks again to Cools for providing again a wonderful venue and also a great breakfast. Thank you very much.